What's up Schwartz Force? Welcome back to the channel. Let's just jump right into it. I first saw this modded Seiko featured on one of my good friends YouTube channels, Average Joe Watch Reviews. I'll link it up here and I just knew I had to have it. Now if you're a follower of my channel then you know why. It's because I love Blancpain watches. And if you also love Blancpain watches, then you know how hard it can be to kind of come across some of these limited edition 50 Fathoms models like the Milspec, the Barracuda, the No Rads, or the Nagers de Combat. <laughs> I know, I'm probably saying that wrong, it's cool. You also know how expensive it can get, of course. Now, there are homage brands out there, but they usually have some level of compromise to them beyond our control. But with modding, you get to control what you want done in a specific build. Now to be clear, I'm not a watch modder, but I know a couple and this watch today we're taking a look at was made by one of the best, my buddy Brandon with Case and Dial. Check it out. Now I've linked Brandon's Instagram down in the comment section, so go give him a follow and send him a message if there's a build that you may be interested in. He can help go over all the details with you, talk pricing and whatnot. Now, this is my 55 Fathoms mil spec build. And while at a quick glance, looks like what would be called an homage of the Hodinkee collaboration done with Blancpain in 2020 is actually more closely modeled after the mil spec edition from 2017, as you will see here in a breakdown over both of those models. The Hodinkee version is absent of a date complication. It's powered by the Blancpain Caliber 1154, which is a no-date version of the Caliber 1151 used in the mil-spec version, both adjusted to run at 3 Hz or 21,600 vibrations per hour, and that is in order to achieve a 100-hour power reserve. The Hodinkee version also has a satin finished steel case and tighter knurling pattern that rests on the top of the bezel, as opposed to wrapping around the full edge and sides like you see on the mil-spec. You'll notice also that the sapphire bezel is absent of the first 15 minute indices and uses a triangle indice at 12 o'clock. While this does give a more symmetrical look to the watch, I personally prefer the look of the mil-spec version, which is just like the original 50 Fathoms 5015 reissue. I like the wider gaps on the knurled coin edge of the bezel, the high polish of the case, again, more reminiscent of the 5015, as is the date wheel tucked away between four and five. Now both versions have the same handset style, however the Hodinkee version uses white gloss paint and the Millspec edition keeps the hands in high polished steel. They both feature the exact same moisture indicator at 6 o'clock, both are 40 millimeters in diameter and have 300 meters of water resistance. Also this may come as a surprise but both watch movements do not allow for hacking of the seconds hand. I know wrap your mind around that for a second. <laughs> Staying true to that vintage style I guess. All right, so we've established this is built around the looks of the Millspec edition. So let's get into the details of this project. It started off as a Seiko SNZ H57, nicknamed the 55 Fathoms, a play on the resemblance to the 50 Fathoms watch while being part of the Seiko 5 series, hence 55 Fathoms. Haha, <laughs> how clever. <laughs> now, it is a 42 millimeter case in polished stainless steel with Hardlex domed crystal, 100 meters of water resistance, and is powered by the automatic Seiko Caliber 7S36, beating at three hertz with around 40 hours of power reserve. And get this, no hacking, just like the Caliber 1151 and 1154. So we're staying pretty true to the Blanc Pond here. Now this particular movement isn't the most accurate and it has a pretty high beat error, but my plans are to swap out the movement anyway, so it's not a big deal to me in the meantime. We can pretty much stop there though because only the case, the crystal, bezel, and the movement were used for this build. Brandon installed a custom dial that has been modeled after the mil spec, but does not have an actual moisture indicator, it's just there for looks of course. The handset used is a bit different, with more of a sword shape to them, there is loom applied, and we have an arrow style seconds hand that is more closely resembling that of the Blanc Pond version. There is a loom bezel insert that was applied, however, this is not a sapphire capped bezel like we see used by Blanc Pond. Instead, the markers and Arabic numerals are engraved into the bezel insert, then filled with loom. 
Finishing up the look, there is an Artem Luxury Sailcloth Strap in black with white contrast stitching in 22 millimeter paired on this watch. I just love these straps. As you all know, I cannot recommend them enough. Any dive watch you have in your collection can be elevated by these, so definitely pick one or more up if you haven't already. And the watch wears smaller than 42 millimeters, as you can see here on my seven and one quarter inch wrist. And it's definitely a better option for most if you just can't pull off that 44 or 45 millimeter homage or the size of the actual original 50 fathoms. And the bezel is a 120 click unidirectional bezel with very minimal back play. And unlike Seiko standards, Brandon has lined this up perfectly so my OCD isn't constantly triggered by any fitment issues. And the bezel action is nice, very easy to turn, and actually has what I can only describe as half clicks, where if you turn the bezel slowly, you can hear and feel a lighter click in between each minute marker. For some reason, I really enjoy it, and each click falls into place without any issue. Now the loom is good, but nothing near what the True 50 Fathoms would offer. Now one downside to modding that I feel is only fair to point out is that there are different parts being sourced and as a result, loom application may not always match up. In the case of this watch, the loom on the dial is much weaker than the loom on the hands and the bezel so they fade in consistently. And it's not a huge deal to me but I could see how it may be to some and if I had the option to swap this where the loom was consistent across the dial, the hands and the bezel, I absolutely would make that choice. Now at the time of this build, it was already hard to source NH35 movements with a black date wheel, so we kept the 7S36 movement. However, I do plan to eventually upgrade the movement to get both hand winding and hacking on this piece. I may switch the handset for one with better loom and in that baton shape that we see in the actual mil spec edition. For now though, it has got all the charm that I could want. And what I love about this watch is that when I don't want to wear my 50 fathoms out, but still want that look and feel, I can simply reach for this one. Oh, and I forgot to mention, this baby is an absolute strap monster. Here are some of my favorite combos. You know, there's something that just feels off, like something's missing. Ah, yes, there we go. Hey, any of my SIG fanboys, drop a comment down below, represent. You know, I had my Reef Tiger homage early on before buying my Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms. And I can say pretty confidently that someday, I really do plan to buy the Milspec 50 Fathoms as well as the Barracuda version. But until then, these mods and the homages out there are great options to scratch that itch. But what are your thoughts on Seiko mods and custom builds like this one? Do you own any yourself or have you built one personally? Let me know in the comments and be sure to go check out Brandon's page, Case and Dial, for more inspiration. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And again, I cannot wait till I get to see you at the next one. Until then, as always, may the Schwartz be with you. Take care.